Hogstock. Hey everybody and welcome to the hog side. I have no enthusiasm to talk right now because <laughs> that was one of the most embarrassing things I've seen. I thought it would be bad. The most embarrassing thing I'd see all weekend would be when my aunt tried to open a gift that belonged to somebody else during Christmas. Because, you know, that was embarrassing. I uh, mean, in the grand but, scheme of things, that's much less embarrassing than what happened tonight. Yes, that was just a she wasn't paying attention faux pas. Or she'd had too much eggnog. No, no, this was just it, sangria. We don't do eggnog in my family. Okay, I don't do alcohol at all, so you gotta, yeah, I'm yeah. just kind of guessing at these drinks. Yes, I, I got you. Uh, eggnog's not a bad guess for most people. Um, it's in every Christmas movie, you know? Right. <laughs> I've never actually even, I, I've had, like, one sip of eggnog You'd in my You'd be life. surprised to learn that I've never had eggnog. You, you know it can be non-alcoholic, and it just tastes disgusting. Yeah, yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> it, it's milk with nutmeg is what it tastes like. Ew. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's gross. I don't, I don't understand why people like it. Um, I'd rather talk about eggnog for a half hour than talk about this. <laughs> we could at this point, I think we could talk about anything <laughs> if you yeah. wanted to, but we do have an obligation to cover this game. We have an obligation. Oh my gosh, what the hell did we just watch, Steve? A nightmare. A nightmare. Um, look, I, I spent the entire second half. All right. I, I spent probably. 27 game minutes of the second half. I looked at every game in team history going all the way back to 1937 because it was more interesting than watching the game, yeah. you know? So, but uh, so, and I have some candidates. I, I think I know where this game falls in the pantheon of embarrassing losses. Mm -hmm. uh, I have the answer to that. Cause everybody's going to say, this is the worst game ever. I have the answer. No, no, I it's, really it's, scientifically not the worst there have been worse i i have them but but, right. but because you guys we have to look at this so you guys have to listen i am going to do the stats because you know they're kind of funny let's you let's, know. let's let's fast do the stats fast fast okay <laughs> yeah. all right so um taylor heineke and kylan combined were 15 for 32 130 172 yards two touchdowns two interception combined quarterback rating was 60.4 heineke was seven for 22 121 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Rushing, Jarrett Patterson was the leading rusher, nine for 33. Uh, and ten, that was 3.7 yards per attempt. Antonio Gibson, six for 29. Um, Deami Brown, two for 53. Terry McClellan was three for 40 on six targets. Yet again, got taken advantage of by Trayvon Diggs, I'd say. Um, and the leading tackle was Bobby McCain. Uh, Dron Payne had a sack. My, Matt Ioannidis had a sack. Um, Dejon Harris had a sack. I thought John Allen had one, but he was not credited with one by ESPN at least. And then punting, I'll spare. Obviously, Tressway got kicked the 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 offense. He was six for three hundred and eight uh, total, and so yes, he out kicked the offense. Dallas, for their part, the court, two quarterbacks, Prescott and Rush, were thirty for forty-two for three hundred eighty-nine yards combined. Five touchdowns, no interception. Hey, we held them under 400 yards, guys. Good news. Well, that's just passing. Oh. <laughs> There's a 140.9 quarterback rating. Prescott himself was 20 for 39, 330 yards before the mercy rule was applied and Cooper Rush came in. Rushing, uh, they were, as a team, they were 28 for 108, 3.9 yards per attempt, which weirdly is not good. Um, Receiving-wise, obviously, there were a whole bunch of receivers that did very well. Amari Cooper, 7 for 85. Malik Turner, 3 for 82. Dalton Schultz, 8 for 82 before he got decapitated. Uh, C.D. Lamb, 4 for 66. It goes down from there. So that's stats um, for this game. Um, not, so, not fun. No. Not fun at all. So let's just start with, yes, this is a horrible loss. Where does this go? See, how it started was I got to thinking in mon the modern era – and I actually took the time to tweet this, which I normally I haven't done in a long time, mm -hmm. as you know. Um, I immediately thought of the Monday Night Massacre. OK, but, you know, you know, because I did an emotional tweet where I said this might be the most embarrassing loss since we started the podcast. Well, I saw that because and that's what got me. Th I saw that because I pulled it up. I was thinking right. 
and I was trying to find something else, and I was looking at Twitter, and I saw your tweet that you sent out. So that's what got me thinking. So, and on an emotional level, it makes sense. That, well, that's I, the Money in a Massacre was – this was – that was November 15, 2010. Mm-hmm. It was at, at home, at FedEx Field, 84,000 in attendance. The final score is 59 to 28 at halftime. Sure. Um, it was uh, 45 to 14. And mm-hmm. so I'm in, in Washington was four, four and four going into the game. Philadelphia was five and three. Um, that's really close. What game was worse? Really close. This was farther along in the year, mm-hmm. you know, so this one might be worse, but it was in Dallas. So I'd probably give in terms of like total disaster embarrassment, I might give the edge to the Monday Night Massacre, even though cause it, Washington scored two garbage time touchdowns in that game in the second sure. half, it, well, you know, and the we got was, one this game, you know, like it's, you know, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, per, I might give a slight edge to that game. Uh, the other one, and there's a bunch of, I'm going to, I, again, I went through every game going all the way back to 1937 here. Um, the Chiefs game in 2013 was 45 to 10. That was also horrible. It was uh, 39 to nothing at halftime, or 38 to nothing at halftime. That's bad. Yeah. But that was the Chiefs, and it was sun, and it was an afternoon game. So I'd give. I don't think that's as bad. Um, we're gonna skip over some of the other ones here. The other one that in the modern era that was was as bad was uh, 2007. Uh, the Patriots 52 to seven. Ah uh, yes. That was now that was an afternoon. It was a late afternoon game in New England, and the score was just 24 to nothing at halftime. And New England really ran up the score in the second half. Yeah, if you guys remember, that's the game where Belichick was running it on fourth down. Yes, to pick late in the game, for, it was a blowout. Yeah. It pissed everybody yeah, off when they were ahead by 40 points. Yeah, and of course, in the end, I would agree with that if it was college, but I mean, it's the NFL. It's like you know, stop them. So sure. that game. It, it, those three games are the worst in the modern era, but it's not the worst loss ever. Uh, and by the way, the worst streak, if you want the worst streak in team history, uh, this would come in 2001, Marty Schottenheimer's first four games. They got outscored uh, 25 to 135 Okay. in the first four games. So that was the worst streak. But Washington actually is a proud owner of the worst loss in NFL history, to my knowledge. And this was 1940. They lost 73 to nothing to the Chicago Bears on December 8th, 1940, in, in a playoff game. That's the worst loss not, in the NFL. Not a history. playoff game, Steve. That was the championship. Well, uh, it's true. Yes, the, yeah. it, Pro I, Football I, Reference that, calls that it a playoff. That is a well-known game, but, championship game. Yes. That is where the Bears purposely tried to break Sammy Baugh's leg. At right. One point. That is. That's. I think the worst game in NFL history. Period. Yes. Is that game? So that's yeah. sort. And and then there was another one. Um, this goes back to 1954, November 7th, 1954. They lost 62 to three to the Cleveland Browns. This was when Joe Kuharch, uh, Kuharch was the coach. Um, and that game was uh, 27 to three at halftime. So that game ended up being worse. Um, but beyond that, and then there was another one, uh, 1961, they lost 53 to nothing to the Giants when Bill McPeak was the coach. Those are the worst games. So I think it's fair and honest to say that this game was top five worst losses in NFL in, in uh, team history. <laughs> Certainly it's the definitely. 73 to nothing game against the Bears is number one. It's number one in NFL history, period. The 1954 yeah, but, loss was was second. I might put the Monday Night Massacre, and then I would put that Patriots game in 2007. So I'd say this may be number five. It's definitely the worst in modern era history. It depends on what you call a modern era, because again, I would probably put the Monday Night Massacre over it, and I would put the mm-hmm. um, the Patriots game over it. But it's close. That's kind of subjective. But yeah, yeah, I think there's some subjectivity. I mean, we are also talking about our rival our chief rival, you know, Eagles might yeah. be up there, but they're not the Cowboys. Uh, yeah. I mean, yes, I agree. And it's not the Cowboys And I'm going to change my mind. Actually. I, I, the, the, the Patriots game was bad, but it was an AFC and AFC game, you yeah. know, but, but. And the Patriots went undefeated that year. You know. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Although Washington, you know, that was a Sean Taylor year, and everybody kind of thought Taylor might make the difference with the Brady Pat yeah. with the Brady passing. But regardless, so I, in the modern era, meaning the last thirty years, I'd say it's some between today and the Monday Night Massacre in two thousand ten. Yeah. In terms so, of overall impact, effect, the it's tragedy a tough call to happened. say which is worse. You know, tough we'll to have say. to kind of let this one marinate for a while. Yeah. Um. He, but, but, but the other two in the fifty, the 1954 game and then the Bears game, clearly worse, you know, oh, going sure. back to well, the 40s and the 50s. Yeah, but different eras of football, too. I mean, you're, the Bears teams back then were – But the it's best. really saying something that I, I truly did look at every single game. Yeah. And those are the handful. This it truly is one of the worst defeats in franchise history, no matter yeah. how you no, look at it. No, it's awful. It. I yeah. mean, and, and here's the things – I think there's a couple takeaways – the the first one to me, and I think it's the one we got to talk about first. You see Allen and Payne fighting on the sidelines. Yes. And look, I know there's people who say, yeah, guys fight on the sidelines all the time. It's never been a good sign. If like you, you think to the biggest fight on the sidelines, it was during a training camp when Michael Westbrook and Stephen Davis got into a fist fight. And Westbrook just beat the hell out of Stephen Davis. And we all remember those photos that got yes. caught of that. When that happened, it was bad enough where we had to basically get rid of both guys eventually. <laughs> um, like, I, when you start <clears throat> seeing this kind of stuff, it, that's a sign that you need to talk about cleaning house. It's not like, oh, you can just let this thing go aside usually. Personally, uh, um yeah, I if if I were the coach, I would have benched both players and suspended them for next week. Mm-hmm. You know, Allen is I, you know, yes, if you look at the film, uh, who knows what they were jawing about. Obviously they were getting destroyed yeah. on the well, field. Well, there's a there's a line coach standing right there. He knows exactly what they were jawing. Yeah, but we don't know. But yeah, yeah. point it and I yes, Deron Payne poked Allen in the face. Mm-hmm. But Allen Allen took swing at his own teammate on national yeah. television to me I, he's benched and suspended I, I might suspend him for the rest of the year for that I, I just don't think i think the coaching staff and jack del rio in particular shows weakness if they let the players get away with that uh, you know mm-hmm. I, I personally i they'd be gone uh, you can't cut them you know obviously but i'd probably sit them certainly for next week and maybe just for the rest of the I, year i mean I, I don't know what my punishment would be but i need to have an answer by tomorrow morning at the latest of here's what happened here's my response here's their punishment like don't you think you know, it shows like, weakness if they yeah i agree with you yeah. if there's not a punishment immediately it just shows that the coaching staff is weak well but again i'm not going to punish them until i know who said what what happened why did well, this... that's, yeah and that's the problem is i mean in the middle of the game i mean right. ron vera probably didn't even know that happened until sure. halftime you sure. know Sure, but somebody should have said something to him. Yes. And, uh, but here's where my le- my level of concern on that is, to me, this is a – we have to ask, did Rivera lose the locker room at some point now? Yeah. Like, and, you know, Steve, I've said this before. One of my few things where I will say if Coach needs to be fired is if he loses that locker room. The second you lose the rock- locker room, you can't get it back. Well, and, and especially those two guys of all the people. These are your team. two first round picks. One's your team captain. He's your best well, player they were in your teammates leader. at Alabama. You know, yeah. these guys have known each other for years. Deron Payne is on this team because John Allen said draft him. Yeah, that's exactly right. I'd love to have been a fly on the wall. I was presumably we will get some inside knowledge. Obviously, the beat writers who are there were not there, but the beat writers will ask questions about it. We should know tomorrow when you listen to this what the story was. Personally, well, we'll know and, the, what they say the story was. What they said, right? But I personally, I mean, the guy who took the, took a swing at his team, you're just you're done. Uh, I, seriously, I don't care if you're, especially if you're the team captain, you just yeah. can't act like that. Now, I everybody fights. I know you haven't played organized, so I have fought teammates, but that's sure. always practice. Uh, you know, yeah, scuffles happen in practice, but this is national television, the team captain on the sidelines in front of the entire football world. I mean, to me, you're just done. Yeah, you know, that's Well, it. I mean, even as an adult, you get into arguments with your coworkers. Yeah, you no, know, like it, you said, I was like, 
15, you know, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but John and Jerron Payne are in their Adult. 20s, they're adults. We get into we get into arguments. I'm sure you've gotten into arguments with coworkers. I've gotten into arguments. Sure. And people I even like, you know, like when you disagree about something, you get passionate, you argue. Have you ever taken a swing at them? I've never taken a swing at them. No. Be, there you go. I, now, I've been in work situations where a guy did like try and take a swing at a guy, but not me. <laughs> I mean, I was in a work situation I had to deal with when I was in the military where somebody swung sure. a shovel at a guy's head. <laughs> Which is that's a, a time murder. <laughs> that would yeah. It didn't connect, fortunately. Yeah. Okay. That's another so, long story. Yeah, but and I, you know what? Your military history, like, there's a lot of that, like, same. Well, that was by the, the record, so, That was a civilian that tried to swing it at, at another civilian. Just oh, for, okay. Yeah. But but again, it's actually a decent comp just because you know the there's high tension energy right. levels there, so it makes sense. What would you do, though, if you were the coach? What would you do? What would the punishment be based on what we've seen, which is just what was on the broadcast? I would definitely – suspension would definitely be the first thing on the table. But I would have to hear both their sides of the story. I, you know, I'm not just going to react. I, I'm I'm a – let me hear what the hell happened. I, I'll tell you who I'm mad at also if I'm the coach. I'm mad at that coordinator who's standing there in between the two and not doing anything. Yeah, that was Sam Mills, who was standing there not doing anything. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, this is what you're paid for is to make sure the. And look, there, I think that we have a coaching problem to begin with. I, I think I've been I haven't been shy about that. That I think a lot of these coordinators under Rivera aren't doing a very good job, you know. And this doesn't help me with, dissuade me of that opinion. No, no, it doesn't. And I mean, from a defensive standpoint, I think the defense and tonight they just got their butt kicked. I mean, there's no doubt. But but the defense has underwhelmed all year. Mm -hmm. uh, they've even looked, when healthy, even when healthy, they've um, th they've played a very basic form of defense. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's not creative um, early in the about, I don't know, the first what, five or six games there were major mix ups in the secondary. Yeah. You know, and yes, that's I I blame the players more than the coaches. But at some point, as Alex, you said many times, it's you know, at some point you got to look at the coaching staff. And I just don't like what uh, Jack Del Rio has done with this defense. I didn't like no. him last year. Last year they put up great stats, but you looked, really looked, and really watched them. They were getting beat when they shouldn't get beat. Right, and, and in ways they shouldn't have gotten beat. Correct. Yeah, but, uh, but in terms of Allen and Payne, I, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I don't really care. What the excuse was to me, Alan took a swing at his teammate on national television. I don't care what, why. That's just yeah. That, there, there's optics that, that, that you have to done. consider too. Yeah, I'd I, I know you're not an optics guy, but I, I just to to me, Alan is done for the year. Probably at least one game, maybe both. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be upset if they're like, look, we're just gonna have him sit out next week because right. we can't have that. Um, now. I think the bigger question is, as a coach, you have to sit those two down and say, can you work this shit out, or do we have to move one or both of you? Well, it's fortunate. I mean, they, they can't move Allen very easily, but Payne is easy to move. <laughs> yeah, fin from a financial standpoint, yes. Uh, now, from a what could you actually get, Allen's probably going to bring you something if you move Allen. Because... Well, I mean, the thing with Payne is that he's a free agent. <laughs> Right. You know, I mean, right. John Allen is signed through 2025. He's got um, he's probably got a big dead cap next year because he just yeah, he has a massive um, pre June yeah. one dead cap. It goes way down as a post June one, but they're still losing money. And so, yeah. I mean, Allen, they really can't get rid of from a practical reality standpoint until the end, until uh, 2000, until. Um, oh, wait, that's the sorry. No, no, no. Um, yeah, so he's got a twenty-six million dollar dead cap in two thousand twenty-two, and so they can't get rid of him easily. They could maybe pull something off if they wanted to as a trade, post June one trade or something. Right. That might be possible, but realistically, no. But Payne is a free agent. Right, right. So they need to figure that out. Yeah. And that's honestly more important than a suspension at this point because this the season basically is over at this point. So, Not basically. <laughs> yeah. There's no basically about it. you don't lose 56 to 14 and pretend you're still alive in the season. It's over. Well, I say basically as in you have to play two more games. 
Like you can't just not show up. Yeah, they can't. Well, <laughs> if if you count showing up to, if you count yes. tonight as showing up, they have to at least do the. They have to physically be physically present on the field right. at least. Yeah. Right. They have to put eleven guys out there. That's the thing. Uh, oh, speaking of putting guys on the field, another thing that was a, like, what the hell's going on with this team? Did you notice how in back-to-back plays the defense was short guys? And had like a defensive end running on at the last second to try and get in on the play. Well, I didn't notice that, but again, I spent the most of the second half looking. Well, through... this was right after Allen and Payne like. Started I did to... see that. Yes, I did see that, and I and Payne uh, for no obvious reason was sitting at the end of the first half, and Allen played. Right. Which I thought well, was telling. I mean, to me, I assume it was he was that angry that they couldn't get him to go on the field. I guess. Yeah. We'll um, find out. Yeah, we'll find out. Um, um, one other failure, massive failure. I mean, holy cow, the offensive line was terrible. Yeah. Jesus. I, I mean, almost every single drop back. I don't know what the stats were, but um, almost every single drop back, Heineke was under pressure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm assuming, again, they put Kyle Allen in just as a mercy rule thing rather than as, you know, a replacement and but by that time it was garb way of garbage time was over yeah. i mean the offensive line truly looked just the worst i've ever seen them this year yeah they were a sieve um and i don't think that you know that honestly shouldn't surprise us that the, the no, no. sheriff was out again uh we're, we're just down too many guys at this point to i be- mean although to be honest yes they're down sheriff they're down to their fourth string center keith ishmael was out there but they had their two starting t- starting right and left tackles, and they had their starting left guard. Yeah. You know, they weren't – yes, they're hurt, and the big five-time pro bowler was not there. Grant, absolutely. But they just got smoked more than anything. Well, you, you saw Chris Collins were talking about it on the broadcast, how the Dallas was moving around Micah Parsons and Randy Gregory and just like out mm-hmm. – they just out-coached them, out-schemed them, yeah. you know, out-athleted them. Beat them in every way possible. I they the, this offensive they need to start over with this offensive line. From, from uh, I mean yeah zero. I think there's a there's a full rebuild on a lot of spots here that need to be talked about at this point. The, um, this we're headed into year three of the yeah, Ronald Perry. I, I, I you know if we're talking about like what did he lose this team? Uh, have to Has he lost hmm? the team? Yeah. Like, is it worth trying a year three? You know, like, that. I hate to say that, but, like, if if this is where we're at at year two, are you up for a year I, three? I mean, I think he can, in terms of keeping his job, can... I think he, you have to almost, just because... An yeah. awful game, and really two awful games in a row, is not going to get him fired. No, no, no. <laughs> Excuse me, since I know Alex is going to edit that out since it's super late... I'll yeah part. right <laughs> i'll edit out a, i'm gonna like spend an extra hour to edit a CD. yeah yeah no sorry about that uh but okay. no but i mean they looked they've looked really bad two weeks in a row that's not going to get ron Rivera fired but if they get smoked like this they just totally get waxed because they got to play the eagles again next week yeah. and, and, and the giants are terrible and so if they get waxed in both of those games i think you got to consider firing him I, I hate to say it but yeah um, you know, like you don't want to go into another year that like he's he's just. I just never stuck. thought I'd see players fighting amongst themselves on the sidelines on national television. That's a real no. awful sign to me. No, it really is. Especially uh, if it's not if it's two guys who are who've been friends since they were a freshman and sophomore in college years ago. Right. You know. Right. They've been playing together longer than we've been doing our podcast, and we've been doing our podcast for a long time. If you think about it, like they've about been that long, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, another thing to talk about with the offense: that first pass that got intercepted to Terry McLaurin, it felt like somebody in this front office or in the, you know, game plan session said, "We well, are going to try and force feed a deep ball to Terry McLaurin early on in this game." And I don't care if you he's covered. I don't care if you see a better option on this play. You are throwing it to Terry McLaurin. That's it. Dot I, Trayvon Diggs has his number. Yeah. I, no question. Know, I don't know what. There's no other way to say it. Trey, he just can't beat Trayvon Diggs. Yeah. As simple yeah. as that. 
it is very frustrating that one of the best corners and one of the best wide receivers in the league, their brothers, they both came from here and neither, you know, ever got a sniff here. <laughs> uh, you know, and I think one of them, you know, Diggs went to Alabama, right? Uh, Trayvon yes. Diggs. Yeah, Trayvon okay. Diggs went to Alabama, yes. Yeah. You, you would have thought with Bruce Allen's love of drafting Alabama guys, he would have picked up Trayvon Diggs at one point. You would think, but but regardless, I mean, I you know, there's no other way to say it is that Trayvon Diggs just owns Terry McLaurin. This is like yeah, the third game in a row that this happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just, I mean, I, I I've been as big a fan as of McLaurin as anybody, but he just can't beat that guy. You know, yeah. it's a simple fact. Well, it doesn't help that we have no one else at at this point. But no, but that was that first interception you're talking about. That was the f- first play play of the game. Yeah. For first Washington offensive play of the game. I mean, that was one-on-one, fly nine route down the field, mm-hmm. and Diggs just had, you know, was Diggs, the, Diggs was in front of him the whole right way. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a terrible play. Uh, just not like I understand why they maybe thought, hey, we should try this, but at some point you should say, oh no, this is not going to work, and Taylor should bail out. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind him taking a shot, but yeah, I mean, when he's totally covered like that, but you know, but they did make. I mean, Collinsworth, again, said this, you know, that McLaurin has made more contested catches than any other receiver in the NFL. And so sure. I, I think they just have a lot of faith in the guy that he's going to beat whoever's out there one on one. But he just can't beat Trayvon Diggs. No, he can't. He really can't. Um, running game sucked. Right. I think that's yes. fair to say. I, although uh, weirdly, Antonio Gibson actually had one of his better days, which is ironic. I mean, six or twenty nine. Yeah, that's for 4.8 yards per attempt. He had the one long 15 yard run. And so if you take mm-hmm. that out, it's really, it's um, five for 14, which is back down to, you know, two yeah. yards and a not, cloud of dust. So, right. I mean, it, it, I guess the sample size was not big enough to be a fair or not. I mean, I he's suspect, clearly not a hundred percent still, and they're still trying to use him because they just need I suspect somebody. If he had 15 carries, it would have been back down to three and a half yards of carry. Yeah. I would expect that too. So yes, the running game sucked. Yes, the running game sucked. Uh, you know who uh, actually looked okay? John Bates. John Bates looked made some effort plays. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Um. He 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 had that one play in what was it, the late third or early fourth quarter? Where yeah, yeah. He just kept going. So, and then he had the touchdown where he fumbled it to himself somehow. That, which, by the way, I thought by rule you can't do that. Like if you fumble outside the end zone, you can't cover in the end zone for a touchdown but they gave it to him yeah i don't know yeah it, it there's so many weird rules about fumbles in that in the end zone that don't make sense yeah i i mean that's clearly what happened though right because he right. fumbled on like the, about the one yard line or so mm-hmm. one and a half yard line and he did not take possession of the ball again until he was in the end zone barely right and so that's like even the touchdown so clearly the uh, the rule that you're saying, it, they did not apply it. Right. If, uh, I, if I that felt isn't you real, can't fumble sure. for forward progress to begin with, and they did. So. I, yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't know. There's nothing redeeming. I mean, it, we can babble for 20 more minutes about the offense, but there's just absolutely nothing redeeming about this whatsoever. It's flat I mean, line. Yeah. Yeah. The, especially, I mean, the most disappointing thing, the offensive line just got totally dominated, really, for the third week in a row. Yeah. If you want to be fair, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, Washington, Washington can't consider itself to be a quality, consistent quality team if they continually get in, get their butt kicked in the division year after year after year. Because don't mm-hmm. forget, Dallas owns Washington in terms of records. Yeah, they oh, won yeah, two no games question. last year. Washington did. But before that, they lost like six in a row to them. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, even the Giants, who've not been good recent years, all these Giants, Philadelphia, Washington, all three of those teams consistently beat Washington. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they just you can't be a good team like that. And and, and just be honest. And last year they got lucky. Mm-hmm. Washington did. They backed into the playoffs at seven and nine. You know, that's not yeah. anything to be proud about. No, it's not. Um, The I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to touch on on the offense. I don't, I, I don't have I don't, anything written I'm, down, again, but I want not much to say, you know. No, there really isn't. Uh, defense, anything else you want to touch on, or do we just want to kind of? No, like, let's the just defense move on. was on life support too. I mean, we know like 
we're what down to our backup practice squad linebackers and yes, corners. but 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 forget about the fight. Yeah, for a minute. The defensive front seven: Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, John Allen, Matt Ioannidis. Mm-hmm. Those guys were out there, and like Shaka Tony was out there a little bit, you know. But yeah. those three guys and Tim Settle, who can start on a lot of teams. That core group out there was out there the bulk of the game. Did they even lay a hand on Dak Prescott? You know, they laid they, a hand on him. Uh, Allen got a sack. Yeah. Did they slow him down at all? Did they make a no. difference? No, no, not in any way. Sacks don't win games. I, I, I've, I've they can win games. It didn't in this game. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think that there's a way too many defensive coordinators that hang their hats on, oh, we got sacks, we got sacks. We, that that's not how you win a football game defensively. Well, I think it, 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 if you get consistent pressure on a quarterback, I mean, they did it to Taylor it Heineke. Look how, look how much Washington's offense was affected by the fact that Taylor Heineke was under pressure on almost every single play. Sure. They, did they get – they only – how many times did they sack? They sacked him four times yeah. on 22 dropbacks, 22 passes. Um, but it was a lot more significant than that. And Washington just – yeah, they got three sacks, but they didn't in any way really challenge Dak Prescott. And then Prescott scrambled a couple times for big yardage on top of mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I mean, they're down to God knows who, a bunch of scrubs for their linebackers, no doubt about it. Although, to be honest, I mean, how big of a drop-off was it really from between David Mayo and Cole Holcomb? That, that is a good question because I wrote that at one point. Oh, you did? I, yeah, I, I wrote that on our Twitter. I was like, should we be worried that David Mayo? I don't see much of a difference between him and Cole Holcomb and Davis right now. And I like Cole Holcomb. I, I think now there. I think Holcomb's got a better, like, more consistent, like, motor. Like Mayo gets beat more, a little more often. And we but, haven't seen enough of Mayo either. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, one game. That's fair. But yeah, there. In terms of overall, like, down in, down out, do they do the same thing? Yeah, about. It's not that big of a difference. I was kind of disappointed we didn't see Milo Eifler get into this game at all. <laughs> I didn't even know he was on the team. I honestly didn't know. He, he was the other linebacker out there. I kept watching for him. I never saw oh, him get in. Okay. Well, do, do, do you even know what number to look for? Yeah, I, I think he's 46, I believe. I always oh, have that's my the... favorite number. Damn it. Now I got to like the your guy. favorite number. <laughs> well, ever since uh, we had bets. Liddell Betts, he wore 46. I've got a soft spot for guys who wear 46. Yeah, 46. He's 46. Yeah. I'm just kidding. The reason why I said that is on the pregame, I noticed that they said, my Leifler has never had a defensive snap in his career. I don't <laughs> oh, think he good. got one today either. Oh, good. <laughs> is he Is he the guy who, when they did the whole like players announcing themselves, they didn't even have a video of yeah, him? Yes, they just showed no, his face? Yeah, because they didn't <laughs> even have time to have him go, my little Eifler. <laughs> Right, right. They couldn't get an intern into the locker room to do it. No. <laughs> on his um, iPhone. Oh, well. I, I thought the the play that most encapsulated this game, probably more than any other, was Malik Turner's ridiculous 61 yard run or a catch there in the fourth quarter, yeah, where he where he just kept juking everybody. Did you notice Collinsworth counted 10 missed tackles in that play? I counted. I counted 14. You count 14. Collinsworth said 10. Alex counted 14. Double digits in, in yes. by anyone's estimation. I, I, that's that might have been the single most embarrassing play I've seen from this team in years. That one particular play. Sure. Sure. Um, Look, Dallas just, I mean, we predicted a blowout. I predicted yeah. a mild blowout. Alex predicted a big blowout. Neither one of us thought it would be this bad. Right. I mean, it- Wound up so much worse than we could have ever imagined. When yes. your own player, anytime one of your players throws a punch at another player on your <laughs> own team, it's just worse than you thought it would be. I, I mean, Dallas is, is a, on a way other level. When they are healthy, yes. playing well, they have so much talent, much more talent. Um, I, I mean, I hate to say it, you know, is Mike McCarthy better coach than Ron Rivera? I mean, at least his team is running on all cylinders. He's you know, but roster. I. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know how this team, um, one, pressures a quarterback when they've got Zach Martin and, you know, and Tyron Smith out there, who wasn't even playing today, by the way. Right. Um, 
you know, and they've got these receivers. There's way too many receivers for a mediocre secondary like Washington's to cover. Mike Cooper, C.D. Lamb, Michael mm-hmm. Gallup, Dalton Schultz. By the way, the Dalton Schultz hit Bobby McCain. He needs to be suspended for that hit. That was oh, an that intentional hell catch. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't get thrown out of the game, to be honest. It looked like it was an intentional dirty play to me. I mean, I hate to say that about a Washington player, but that's just how I feel. Yeah. I, uh, look, we're going to be on the safety market, too, because – uh, I don't know what's going on with the DeChazer Everett thing, but and we're, we're going to have to talk about that on the pregame show. Yeah. But that that's not good either, what's going on there. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we don't know much in terms of his physical condition and really what happened other than it was an accident. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, but, and, and somebody was killed and, and he was in the hospital. From a roster standpoint, he's on the non-football injury list. So right. we'll talk so they about said that serious more. non-life-threatening injuries. To me, that yeah, means he's, that. yeah, that could be pretty bad. We'll talk um, more about that. On, on yeah, the we'll Thursday. talk about that. Um, so what else on this? I mean, it, there's just I, I don't even know what to say about. I mean, yeah. it's just it's one of the most. I mean, I already went over the games. It's in the, certainly by anyone's estimation, it's a top games. five loss in in in, in it's a. Top five loss in in team history. It's maybe number three, depending on how you subjectively evaluate it. Yeah. Depending on how you view the Monday Night Massacre, those are the two. And that New England game is probably three, just because it was the Patriots, not a division game. I mean, those two in the modern era in the last 30 years are the yeah, worst. De- oh, definitely, definitely. You know, yeah. so I, it's just there's no redeeming value out of this game whatsoever. There is not. And so thus, I'm going to say, you know, game balls, I'm giving nobody a game ball. I'm not giving anybody. Even I, I mean, yeah. there's just, I, I sometimes make a joke out of this game ball thing just because yeah, it's kind of funny. But this game, I can't make a joke out of this. I mean, if I was to give an offensive one, I'd give John Bates probably because of that. He looked like he was some anything. effort. Yeah. Yeah. But there's no, but nobody on defense. I mean, when you've got players fighting amongst themselves, there's huh? no, I'm going to, I'm going to start replacing game balls with pink slips. If this keeps up, honestly, I, 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 I thought, I thought a lot about it in the second half. Cause again, I was really researching stats more than watching, you yeah. know, and my initial visceral reaction, that fight was pretty bad, but I calmed down over the out next hour and a half. And I'm still at the same conclusion. I just don't know how you let, especially John Allen play. I don't care what was said. Clearly Deron Payne was upset. He was yelling right. at Allen in particular. Allen's the captain. You need to be better than that, son. You really do. I mean, if you're the team captain. You need to show the example. And so I, I just, I just don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how he's not suspended. We'll see. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think it would make Ron Rivera and Jack the Rio look, really weak if they don't do something that's why I, your question alex was the best what's the punishment he's yeah. got to have an answer maybe tonight and certainly by tomorrow morning he's got to have an answer it's got to be something more than well it, you know they were heated and you know blah blah sure. blah it's got to be something tangible i just well, don't look, know how you, how you like you said something. he's a captain and I, i've come to realize there's a couple different types of leaders out there in the world and you know people who are managers whatever emotional leaders you know you see a lot of them in football guys who you know they're the leader because they are the emotional heart of the team we see plenty of those the the tactical leaders are probably more important quarterbacks are usually more of that tactical leader but the one thing you have to do is lead by example and it doesn't matter what other leadership style you have if you can't lead by example you're not a leader and you know like what we just saw from Allen, man that's that's no good and you're right. Like, he probably does need some kind of punishment. And if he doesn't Payne get one. Too. I mean, I, we don't know really what Payne said. Payne might need punishment, too. And he did oh, poke his teammate in the face. I mean. Right. I mean, look, you were cha- basically stepping up to a guy to challenge him to a fight. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I, I So, look, I'm fine if both get punished. But something but the, needs to happen. When the team captain swings, it's just, I, you know, you probably need to take his captaincy away. That's oh, at the minimum. You need to pull yeah. that C off his chest for yeah. the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. But we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens when Ron Vera talks to the media. Matter of fact, real quick before we go, because I know we're out of time and it's super late and all of that. Yeah. Let me just check to see if Alan or if Ron has said anything really fast before we go. 
That's a good idea. I can Google it too. Okay, I'm not it, 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 Matthew Paris uh, Paras. He's per- got the whole Jerron Payne press conference. I'm not going to sit here and watch it while we're on the air. Um, okay, here's John Keim quotes Payne. You got brothers. You all fight, don't you? Stuff happens. Told reporters there that it's all good, and I edited the quote a little bit for language. Um, gotcha. So that's what Drawn Payne's quote was. And so he's just passing off as, eh, you know. Oh, here we go. Here's my thing. I have a brother. You know when we stopped fighting when we were 12? You know, like, yeah, okay. or so I was. John Rivera has answered the question. So this is John Kime. Um, John Kime's tweet. So credit to Kime. Ron Rivera told reporters that he spoke with Payne Allen, said he'll keep what they said to himself, said no disciplinary action, stems from frustration, wanting to win, etc. I totally disagree with that. I think yeah. Ron Rivera is 100% wrong. It makes him look weak, and uh, uh, there's no excuse for that. I, I strongly disagree with Ron Rivera. I, I mean, look, I, he might not be the guy. I hate to say that yeah. this early into his time here. But like that to me, that to me is a flag that he might not be the guy. Yeah, I agree. I so, agree with you. Yeah. All right, guys. Sorry to end it end the year on such a down note, honestly, because I guess we have one more show before 2022. But oh, do we? Oh, yeah, we do. We've got the Eagles pregame show. Yes. So that'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Ken Washington looks like something that's not Southeast Iowa State playing Alabama. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Because the truth of the matter is they got most of their play. Yes, the linebacker core is decimated. Yeah. No doubt. In the in they're missing their number one corner. But beyond that, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, the whole defensive line group was back. But besides Chase, who's been out for another reason. I mean, right. yes, it's been awful. But they did. By the time today rolled around, yesterday for you guys listening. They had a good number of players back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That was a very frustrating loss. Uh, See, si, senor. Let's, let's roll it back up and do it next week. There you go. Just f- throw the game film away. Yep. Yep. But Ron All Rivera, right. you're totally wrong. Yeah. You. Yeah. So that's frustrating. Okay. We'll we'll talk later, Steve. We'll talk we'll talk after the show. All right. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.